first miracle that Jesus did. You don't want to miss the, the phrase that comes right after that. The first miracle that he did in Cana of Galilee. Because the problem is, the first miracle Jesus did involved war too. But it was the world was formless a void. And it was covered with war, wasn't it? And he transformed that war. So Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let us create. So Jesus is part and parcel of the first miracle of all the miracles, the creation of the worlds. And then it dawns on me that, that here we have Jesus as he begins his earthly ministry right here, and he's dealing with that world again. And now he's reshaping water. The water is being reshaped into wine. And that's a miracle for sure. But then he does another miracle with the wine. And at the Last Supper, what's he saying? This is my blood. And the wine has changed into the blood. And it strikes me too that when he's there at Calvary, when the centurion pierces his side, what comes out? Water and blood. The Lord is, is calling us into this, into this mystical recreation. And he saves the, the winekeeper, the steward says, you know, he saved the, the best for last. Or he saved the best for the last in that, in that wedding, for sure. But he saved the best for last, didn't he? Not just at Calvary, but the resurrection. There was a, a last after the crucifixion. But the best for last is, what is he going to change the world into when he comes again? Mm. That's going to be the best. It? And that's going to be the last, too. You save the best for last. And what I would say is, you know, everybody wants a miracle. The thing is, nobody wants the problem that necessitates the miracle. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? There's no miracle without a problem first. Mm -hmm. We all want the miracle. We just don't want the problem that we have to have before that. And in the God's eyes, problems always precede miracles because in God's eyes, the problems that you and I have are all opportunities for him to be glorified. After he changes the water into the wine, Jesus was glorified and the people believed. Problems, in God's eyes, are opportunities. In our eyes, problems are obstacles. Problems are barriers. But in the Lord's eyes, problems are just doorways. If you don't have your eyes open to see the power of the Lord to do transformative work. Because see, we're all, we're all water, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We're all water. At the, at the altar, when I'm preparing the communion elements. You, know, you put the water, you put the wine into the chalice, and then the last thing you do is you take the water and you pour some water into the chalice. That water represents our humanity. Mm -hmm. And I say a little prayer over that water and make the sign of the cross. Lord, bless this water that it might be a symbol of our humanity that we might be united with you in your divinity. What, what are we talking about? That this water that's then mixed with the wine, the ordinariness, that we would consume that and we as ordinary people would become extraordinary. Extraordinary. But not the most extraordinary. That's going to be the last, isn't it? The best is always for the last. And y'all have all kinds of problems in here. Everybody does. They've always got their mess. You know? But the thing is, in God's eyes, there's the chance for you to connect with him. There's got to be a problem before there's a miracle. And when that problem comes, it's not the worst. It's a doorway to the best. But even when that's solved, there's going to be another problem coming behind that, and another problem, and another problem, until Jesus creates the new Jerusalem. And there's no more prophets in say. That will be the best, and it will be the last. And for that we could say, thanks be to God.